So the iPhone 13 mini has been on the market for nearly two years, just here in September when it does get unveiled, the iPhone 15 models, the iPhone 13 mini will be closing in on two, won't have time to cover it then, but I do now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the current price tags of these phones. You can see hovering around 445. I don't know who's going to pay 1399 or even over a thousand for a mini, nobody really. But I've seen these on eBay from the 400s. Now, technically, that means you could find this phone, the iPhone 13 mini, in this petite size and compact nature for less than the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE, second generation, or actually the third generation, the one with the A15 Bionic. That phone with taxes at Apple stores is probably close to 500 bucks. So you can get this phone, which is far superior to that phone for maybe less money, depending on where you look. Also, carriers are throwing in these phones basically for no money down, and you'll be able to do, you know, basically pretty lower payments per month than you would on some other premier flagships at this point. Okay, let's talk about design. Now, because Apple likes to keep designs the same for basically ever, the iPhone mini right here, the 13 mini, looks like basically the 12 mini with a diagonal camera, looks like the 13, 13 Pro. Um, Not the 13 Pro because of the cameras, but 14, 14 plus, just in a smaller footprint. Um, In terms of the sides, the aluminum body really does add to a very lightweight phone here. If they would have put some kind of metal, it would have definitely weighed this thing down. The 5.4 inch display is quite small and compact. And then you have a glass front here. It's just a really light, easy to hold phone. Very reminiscent of the iPhone SE 2016 in the size, but a little bit bigger than that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weight here. So 5.22 ounces, if we take a look at the grams, this phone only weighs 148 grams. That's insane. 148 grams is a featherweight. The iPhone Max weighs around 260 grams. With a case on it, it's like 290. It's up there. It's a big boy. This thing over 100 grams lighter. So it's like basically nothing. And I got to tell you, the size and the build after two years, I actually stopped using this phone for this weird reason. I was actually like having phantom like checks in my pocket because I didn't even know if it was there. It was freaking me out. Like, did I lose my phone? This happened multiple times where I just didn't even know it was in my pocket. It was so light. Build and durability is also quite strong. The glass on the rear is pretty durable. The edges are very durable. The camera lenses can crack if you hit it on the right angle. So can the back if you hit it on the right angle. The front glass, I still recommend screen protectors because while they're very durable, like they don't crack super easy unless you drop them face down on cement. They they do get scratched up quite easily with keys and over time just throwing this in a purse or a bag or anything like that. These these screens on all these iPhones get scratched up. But durability wise, IP68 dust and water resistance, you know, it's pretty darn durable. You could probably drop this thing in some water and if you retrieve it fast enough, it's going to survive. So it's a very durable device. Now, I will say one thing I do notice with this phone, especially when the light mode is enabled on the iPhone 13 mini, is I, I actually see the notch a little bit more. I think it's just because the phone is smaller. It kind of just stands out more up there. So it's kind of more visible versus a larger phone where you have a lot of canvas and you're not really looking at it. Um, also, I will say that this phone, while it's much, much more comfortable than a larger phone, the, the design of this phone still kind of digs into the palms in the corner unless you put a smooth silicone case on here. So the way it stands by itself definitely digs into the palms a little bit, but it's still very comfortable and super easy to one hand this phone, especially for me. My hands are pretty big. You could see right there. I could just basically cover this whole entire phone with my hands. Some people, this actually will feel like a regular smartphone. Like if you have small hands, You know, this actually would feel like a regular size smartphone to somebody with large hands. All right, so let me move on to the display. Now, I took this photo on the wallpaper, so it's not actual wallpaper. It's a photo I took. Um, But the display here is just about like the iPhone 14 and just about like the iPhone 13, which is very good. It's plenty bright. It can hit a pretty good brightness outdoors as well. It's like 1,000 nits in sunlight. It's like 800 nits usable, so a very solidly bright display. Now it's also OLED, so way better contrast ratios than you'll find on the iPhone SE. I also wanna mention that it's not 120 hertz, but it doesn't really matter. I don't wanna hear about that Asus Zenfone compact phone 
that phone is not as small as the mini. And also people who are looking for the iPhone don't even know that exists. They want the iPhone. That's just the bottom line. So we're talking about the mini here before you start talking about that compact Zen phone. I've seen it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. But people who want the iPhone mini are not looking at that device. I'm telling you right now, the majority are just going to be getting the mini and being on their way. Um, and I got to tell you, the display 60 hertz right here is really it's quite smooth. But it's also not as smooth as 120 hertz, but it doesn't really matter to me on the mini. And the reason why is because I don't feel like a person using the mini is all about that content consumption life, that over usage of their phone life. They just want a phone to be a phone with some basic app usage. And really, who cares about 120 hertz when you're using a phone at this size? I really don't. I don't know if you do, but for me, it works out pretty well with the 60 hertz. And by the way, Apple 60 Hertz is one of the smoothest in the business. So even when you are scrolling through applications, you really don't notice until you start comparing it to a phone that doesn't have the 60 Hertz. So I find it pretty good. Now, um, that's basically all I got to say about the display. I will say that when you are looking at some photos and stuff, let's go ahead and take a look at one of these photos I have here. Um, those are my wallpapers. Let's go over here. To, this is an older one for an iPhone 10. It was just in my iCloud. But if we go here, you'll see that the notch can cut into content. And certain applications are actually not developed properly. And so they will actually get in the way of the notch. Uh, that's about it. You know, other than that, you know, pretty thin bezels, pretty solid display experience. I do want to give a mention of Face ID. It's kind of nice to have that on a smaller mini phone. It feels... It just feels, uh, after a couple of years, it just feels kind of cool because with a phone this size, I always would have Touch ID. So basically, Face ID on here, while it doesn't feel any different from the premium phones, if you had like an iPhone 6 or iPhone 8, now you get a smaller compact phone with that Face ID, which is very convenient. So that worked pretty much flawlessly as well. Now, software also has been great on the 13 series and the entire 13 series. Um, never really had too much lags or major, major issues with this phone. 16 brought some bugs early on, but the, the overall experience of software has been pretty stellar on the iPhone 13 mini. Um, also, you get plenty more updates if you consider buying this phone now. You still have a few years left of update support on this particular device. And Apple A15 Bionic, is, while it's not probably clocked quite as high as the 14, this phone right here is definitely plenty fast and can easily run everything on the market today. So they really haven't really improved chip performance too much anymore. So really, you're at the point here with the iPhone mini where you have a lot of great performance left. And that includes gaming. That includes pretty much all the apps you want to run on the App Store. It's stellar here. Even two years later, I could easily recommend this phone right now. All right, guys. So what about the battery life? This is a definite contention point for a lot of people getting the mini. I think you have to go into the mini with the expectation that, you know, this is not going to be the strongest battery life out there. I wouldn't even buy this phone if you were considering being a heavy user. Like, what's the point of buying a small mini phone if you're going to be a heavy user? But anybody, and I mean anybody, who uses this phone like a casual phone will get through the day without needing a charge on the Mini. And I'm talking about casual use as in it's in your pocket a lot. You pick it up for a few texts throughout the day. Maybe you use a GPS connected to your Apple CarPlay or something of that sort. You take a few photos, have a couple FaceTime calls. Basically, everybody's going to make it through the day on this phone. It's an easy day phone and it's better than a 12 mini. Um, but if you start watching video, you start doing 4K video, you start gaming on this phone, you start getting heavy into the use. I mean, what's the point in buying a phone this size then? I think it's all about the portability factor and less usage with just more of a comfortable one hand experience for a person on the go. Um, if you're going to be going heavier, just get a bigger iPhone. But battery life for me has been good enough on the mini and more impressive than I've seen on the 12 mini. So what about the cameras? Well, we have a dual 12 megapixel setup here. Pretty simple setup. I definitely like it. And I got to tell you, the camera experience on the mini has been incredible in terms of you just fire a shot and it really comes out very nice. In addition, you do have really good video quality as well on here. I'm talking 4K 60 capabilities. And I don't just mean, you know, to talk about specs in the sense of like, 
other phones don't have this, but the iPhones has some of the best sensors and so does the mini here. So no real issues when it comes to any of this. You can get some amazing video and pretty low key with this small phone, nobody's gonna be able to tell that you're taking video. And you got photo and a really nice wide angle as well to get a super wide shot. Portrait modes are solid on here, not the best in the world. You do have slow motion, time lapse. And if you dig around, you can play with some of these photographic styles on here, just like you could do on some current iPhone 14 models. So that's nice. If you wanna break it down and get a little bit more pro, you can go 16 by nine over here. You can start tweaking the exposure values and in portrait mode, you can change the f-stop. So there is quite a few little pro-like things you can do in there, but the results speak for themselves. They're solid on the iPhone 13 mini and they never really let you down. It's a really good camera for those of you who just wanna take the phone out and take a shot. Also, if you go into the settings, you go into the camera, you'll see that you do have the ability to go 4K24, which is more of a cinematic-like video. And then you got 4K60 HDR video. I mean, for a small phone, this thing is pretty loaded with features, I would say, and pretty darn nice results as well. Definitely not, not gonna let anybody down. It's a top-tier camera in the Mini. I also really like the front-facing camera too, because the front-facing camera is a 12 megapixel that really matches up well to the back. And the video quality is also solid on here. This is one of my favorite phones if I'm gonna do a front-facing video um, because it's so small, easy to hold, and also gives me amazing footage off this camera while being low key, where it's not like all in your face that I'm recording. So it's a good vlogging phone as well. So really enjoy that aspect of this device as well. So audio is an area of this phone. You're not gonna have the most amazing experience. I mean. This is a tiny phone with not huge speakers, and also the USB-C is not available for this device, so you'll be doing lightning, but it does have wireless charging, which is pretty good. But yeah, just these small speakers on a small body, you just can't put uh, physically larger speakers in here, so Max phones just sound much better. So do regular Pro models. They, this one is definitely a little bit more tinny at the highest volumes. So speakerphone calls, not gonna be the best on here but still they'll be doable, but they're just not gonna be the loudest. So if you're looking for a super loud speakerphone, this one's probably not it. And the phone call quality experience was pretty good. Um, this phone kind of felt tiny up to my head because it's a mini compared to some larger phones, um, but the signal strength was also pretty solid. And I like the being able to one-handed quickly type in numbers. That's very good as well on the mini. I would say just about as solid as all the other iPhones in that department no real issue. So really the call to the mini is that it's even two years later, it's still a very unique phone. And it's one that I think a lot of people miss. Um, there's a lot of people who don't care, but the 14 plus proves that then with the sales numbers we've seen that it's not super popular either. Um, I think the issue with the mini is the price. When it first came out, I just think it's too high. It was too high to justify the price. If this phone was like $200 cheaper, it would be a runaway hit. It was just the price point was too high, I think, to grab a lot of consumers because they were charging like 700 bucks for this phone, even though it's this small. So that was really hard to justify when you could just pay a little bit more and get a bigger phone or pay for last year's phone, which is the max version for cheaper than this little tiny phone. So that was the real, I think, bottleneck there for the sales of this product. But overall, I think it's a really great steal right now if you find it used or you find a great deal on it. Apple's still charging, you know, pretty high prices for this, and they're still going to have it. And they're probably still going to have this around even after the iPhone 15 models. But I would say go pick one up before this phone goes out of date if you really like this compact form factor, because we might never see it again. So that's it for me. Two years later, excellent phone. Still love the Mini and still definitely, definitely recommend it. Comes in multiple different colors as well. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. And if you have a 13 Mini, share your comments below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.